Hey, hey, what is up, Hootube? We are back with a PayPal request. This one is from Chris Block and an inspired Hootube. It inspired Keith Moon, the Who Week on this channel. Actually, along with the next request, which is from Eric Ballin. By coincidence, I had two people request Keith Moon, the Who videos, and that's inspired me to do a week dedicated to Keith Moon and the Who. We are going to get straight into it. Uh, first of all, I'm going to read out Chris's message here. Hey, Andrew, another Keith Moon request. This is a live version of Can't Explain circa 1964 featuring an 18 year old Keith Moon. Video of him playing is amazing and especially the early to mid 60s, there wasn't anyone like him. Thanks, Andrew. Keith considered one of the best rock drummers, but others say if he was in any other band, he would sound like your feedback appreciated. Yeah, that's the million dollar question, man. Would he have sounded good in a different lineup? Not sure. Maybe by the end of this week, I'm going to have a better handle on that. With that said, let's check out your selection here, which is The Who. I can't explain with an 18 year old Keith Moon on drums. It's a short clip, but like Keith's life and like his playing, I'm sure it's going to be pretty explosive. Let's get into it. This is an interesting part here. Let's just back it up a little bit. Just listen to the displacement that he plays here. Chris Block, thank you so much for this request and for, again for helping me kick off the Who Keith Moon week. Now you asked here, Keith considered one of the best rock drummers, but others say if he was in any other band, it would sound like like it wouldn't work, right? Um, that's obviously really early Who and Keith Moon. I believe they formed in 1964 i think the video said that that was 65 just have a look at that original video and keith moon is 18 or somewhere around there he looks so young too in that video this is a tricky one he i feel like there's probably going to be an evolution in his personality coming out in the plane People, I always hear people saying that he doesn't play hi-hats. Well, he's got hi-hats there. Does he lose his hi-hats? Or does he just, does he have hi-hats, but he just doesn't 
write on them? Does he just not play on them? So I've got a few questions about that, which I'm sure, again, are going to get answered during the week. There was a few things there that stand out to me, but they're not that unusual. It's probably quite an amateur or let's let's call it a naive approach on the drums or a young, it's like a young person's approach on the drums to play a lot of drum fills. If you're not sure what a drum fill is, a lot of people watch my channel who are not drummers. Drum fills are the bits that basically fill in the gaps between sections or within the beats. You heard him there doing a lot of 16th note drum fills. Fairly repetitive type of fills, but I wouldn't say he's repeating himself over and over, but they're repetitive sort of ideas and repetitive subdivisions. I think what's unusual is the amount of fills. He's playing a lot of fills. So we've almost got this lead drummer thing going on. I wouldn't I won't go as far as to call it ego. Not yet, at least, as I don't know enough to say that. But it's almost like there's an excitement. There's an excitement, a hyperactivity in the drumming and in the person, in the player that is there's something in there that is making him do more now it can propel the music it can create a lot of momentum if you're good at it and if you're musical with it and i believe he is musical with it i think it's there for a reason i think he is one of these people, he's one of these human beings that he is inside the music when he plays it. I think back to jazz school and one of my favorite professors, one of my favorite teachers at uh, university was a, was a guy called Stephen Small. He was actually a, a pianist, but uh, he'd just have these really insightful comments. And I don't want to misquote him, but I believe at one point uh, at school, he said something along the lines of, He's only ever heard two natural talents or two natural, like, just completely gifted musicians. And they were both drummers. One of them was the great Tony Williams, the famous jazz legend. And the other one was Keith Moon. And because this, this teacher, Stephen Small, he was he was always sort of challenging the norms and challenging people's perception of things. So I tr sort of got that from him that I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to necessarily believe or swallow that until I understand Keith Moon and I get a chance to hear him. This song sort of makes me think, I know what he's talking about. He is completely in the music. That's not an easy concept to explain or describe. I can't, I can't even really tell you what I mean by that. I just mean he, he is part of the music. He has, he has inserted himself as, as a person within this music. He's not playing a drum part for a song. He is the drum part for the song. It's a different way of thinking of it. This normally happens... With originals groups, can happen with covers or ensemble players, you know, the great session legends, you know, as I read on the previous video, one of his favorite drummers was Hal Blaine, who was a completely different character to Keith Moon, who's a very refined and very professional sort of 12 hours a day in the studio, one of the most recorded drummers of all time. A real contrast because both players are famous and well known for being inside the music although from wildly different perspectives and wildly different approaches. So I'll just throw that out there. To try and answer your question, Chris Block, um, you know, would he have worked in another band? I think so. There's nothing there that I think, especially style-wise for the era, for the 60s, and you've got this sort of, I don't know, what we what do we even call this? 60s, 60s rock and roll sort of light, 
approach, you know, Beatles type stuff. Very, very short song. I think the song was under two minutes. I think, I think you know, he, he'd be considered a very, very competent drummer. If he's playing at that level, playing this type of stuff in the 60s, he would have been considered a very, very competent drummer to be playing like this. I'm not saying he wouldn't now, but I'm just, I'm just trying to think, you know, who his contemporaries were and who he could have potentially played for. There is an element of chaos already apparent in the style with the activity and the need for a lot of note density in the plane. This is a pretty simple 60s bubblegumish type song and it's like he can't contain himself to playing the groove and then playing the occasional fill to take this into a section. He's got a constantly fill he's constantly going around the drums and he's riding on a crash i don't know if that was a crash cymbal or a ride cymbal but that's a loud part of the kit that is a loud place to crash and normally during the verses where there's a lot of words we will ride on the hi-hats closed because it contains the sound and allows the vocals to really be heard and then perhaps in the chorus where you get the sing-along part that's where we might open it up and go to the ride or maybe a crash ride he's loud and crashing the whole way through which is indicative of his style and his personality i suppose fascinating fascinating early start live footage to kick off this the who week i really dug that Guys, as with all of my videos, original video link in the description of the video. Go along, check it out. Uh, if you would like to support this channel further, I do have a Patreon. It's just $5 a month. You get access to the blocked videos. If you have a direct reaction request like this one for Chris Block, that is available via my PayPal link. Please do consider hitting that subscribe button, like button, leaving a comment with what you thought of this video. How are you feeling about the Who Keith Moon week? and any info relevant to this video or any videos that you want me to check out in the future. Remember, you as a subscriber get access to a full and free 30-day trial over at Drumeo. I just had a look over at Drumeo and there is a whole bunch of analysis on Keith Moon by some of the world's best drummers. And there is also note-for-note -note transcriptions of Keith Moon's playing on some of these famous who songs so please do go along check it out you will not be disappointed it's free on me got nothing to lose go get it guys until tomorrow and the next part of this keith moon the who week keep chopping wood don't destroy your drum kit catch you tomorrow ciao